I'm Noah from One Lung Racing and today we're going to go over why I think the Honda XR200 is one of the best dirt bikes of all time and how I scored this one at a great price and what it takes to get this thing running again. But first, let's dig into the history of this bike so we know how it came to be. Honda XR200 may be one of the best all-round dirt bikes for the money. It may lack power, but it made up for that in reliability and part availability. In 1986, Honda reimagined the XR200, fixing the issues of the 1984-1985 four-valve models. By returning the simpler, lighter two-valve engines from earlier years, the redesign of the frame, Honda created a versatile and reliable four-stroke. It wasn't a powerhouse, but the XR200, with modest horsepower, translated into a dependable, controllable trail performance machine. Featuring a six-speed gearbox, it became the favorite among learning riders, women, and short riders due to its slim build, manageable seat height, and maintenance was straightforward, with a rebuildable shock and adjustable suspension adding to its appeal. Though not intended for racing, the bike handled trails beautifully and delivered a solid performance with low traction environments. The XR200R came with a 17-inch rear wheel, which limited choices, but IRC provided options to keep a trail ready. While drum brakes lack the precision of modern discs, they work adequately for its purpose. Over time, the bike's design remained relatively unchanged through 1993 when Honda shortened the suspension travel, furthering condemning the XR200R as a non-competition model. The XR's simplicity was both its strength and its weakness. Many ended up in the hands of inexperienced riders, leading to excessive wear and tear. Despite its limitations in power and suspension, it became known for its durability, lightweight frame, and ease of use. Finding a well-maintained one today can be tricky, as many were neglected, but for those who can locate one in good condition, it may be the best bang for your buck. Now that we've gone through the history of this bike, I'm going to tell you guys eight reasons why I think, personally, this is one of the best bikes that money can buy. Alright, cut that. Reason number one, it's affordable. They've been making these bikes since the early 80s, and honestly, there's so many years of them, you can get them at really good deals if you check on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, and you can find some good non-running ones for very, very low money. Alright, not to mention the fact that you can get some running ones in very good shape for $1,500, which is a lot cheaper than some of the newer bikes today. Obviously, if you go to a dealership or you buy any other used bike, you're probably going to look at upwards of $4,000 to $5,000. Alright, reason number two, it's versatile. Does this bike do everything great? No. Does it do anything exceptionally well? Not really. But for what it is, it's a great trail bike. You can take it to the track um, and it does everything good enough, I would say. So if you're looking for an all-around bike, I think it's a very good option um, that really doesn't break the bank and does everything pretty well. All right, reason number three. Any type of rider can ride this bike from beginner to experienced. Um, somebody just starting out can get on this bike. It doesn't sit very high. The suspension's pretty soft and can get on it and can ride and have fun all the way up to somebody who's very experienced that may want to do a hair scramble on it in a vintage race and can just have just as much fun. And that's the third reason why I think this is a great bike all around for you to buy. All right, reason number four, performance. Now, is this going to run with a 450 or a big bike? No, probably not. But there's some easy upgrades you can do to this bike to really get more power, um, starting with the pipe, starting with a big bore kit, um, different carburetor options. Um, and they've been making this bike for years, so it's pretty easy um, to get parts for it. So you can definitely upgrade this bike and make it a little more powerful depending on your riding level, which makes this also a very good entry level option all the way up to a more experienced riders option. All right, reason number five, durability. This old girl's a Honda. She's gonna run for years. Even if I've seen bikes with barely any oil, with knocks, um, still going. Um, Hondas are known for their reliability, and this is a very, very solid engine. Like I said, they've been making this since um, this is an 87 model, but they've made them all the way up to the mid-2000s. Um, so easy to find parts, and it's a very, very reliable bike that you can kickstart, and it's probably going to start first or second kick, and it's going to last a very long time. As you can see, this one's from 1987, um, and we're going to get this thing going, and I'm sure it's going to be pretty, pretty easy to get going because, A, it's a Honda, it has compression, it has spark, um, and that's really all you need other than fuel and air. So that's another reason. All right, reason number six, parts. They've been making these XR200s for years and years and years. And honestly, since about 87 to about 2000, I'm not sure exactly the year, all the parts are exactly the same. So you can jump on eBay and find pipes, you can find heads. Um, pretty much every part for this bike is accessible, which makes it really nice for somebody that's trying to buy a bike and try to keep it very cheap. Because honestly, if you buy a new bike today, parts take a while to get in and sometimes they're not always readily available. So this makes it a very good bike to buy if you're trying to tinker on something um, and you don't have a ton of money to spend. 
All right, reason number seven. Honestly, I love the look of these bikes, the classic appeal. It's a 1987 Honda. You've got some really cool colors. You've got some really cool options for graphics um, to make them look like they did in the 1980s. Um, so I think they just are really cool looking bike. I don't really like some of the early 2000s models looking XR200s, but some of the early model ones to me look really cool. And I think you can make these bikes look really cool even though they're still an old bike. Um, and like I said, you can get them for pretty cheap. So it makes it a win-win in both scenarios. And lastly, number eight, one of my main reasons why I like this bike is it's comfortable for me to ride. It's got a big old seat, very, very comfortable. And if you're trail riding or you're on some longer rides, sometimes the newer bikes today, I don't find as comfortable, obviously, because the seats are smaller. Um, they're a little harder. Um, but I find this bike very, very comfortable to ride, and it just uh, suits my riding pretty well. And I really just enjoy riding it because it is comfortable. All right, this is the part of the video, guys, where I tell you that 75% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel to watch these videos. So if you guys like vintage bikes and want to see me do more videos like this, make sure you guys subscribe. All right, now that we know some of the history and the reasons for loving the XR200, let me tell you about mine. I purchased this bike about two months ago after riding the XR200 the past summer and realized how versatile and fun these little bikes really are. So I went on the hunt. After searching Facebook Marketplace with no looks, um, one late, late night, this one popped up on Facebook Marketplace for $1,500. Now, this was out of my budget, but as one does, I shot a low ball offer with hopes that he didn't really know what he had. And because this was a 1987 year, arguably, this was one of the best years of the XR200. Eventually, he came down to 1200 bucks, which was still out of my budget, but I kind of loaded my stuff up anyways, and I drove about two hours to go take a look at it. Now, let me tell you. When I got there, the pictures online looked a heck of a lot better than they did in person. The front fender was missing, was missing. it definitely needed a bath, and to make things worse, I couldn't get it to start. After about 20 minutes of kicking, I was able to tell the owner that I didn't think it had any gas in it, and I offered him $700 because without knowing if it ran or not, it was a really big risk for me. He finally accepted the offer and I drove home, so let's fast forward to today. So I'm currently moving into a new garage, if you guys couldn't tell, and I haven't even had a chance to look this bike over. So hopefully in the next video, I can break down everything and see what's wrong with this bike so we can finally get this thing running after years of neglect, because obviously I could tell the previous owner did not take very good care of this bike. So now that you guys know how I got this bike, what are my plans for it? Um, so like I said, I would really like to do a build series on this thing. I don't want to restore it frame off restoration wise, because I, I want to ride this bike. So um, in the next couple videos, I'm going to show me kind of tearing this bike down and doing what I would do to take it from a bike that's non-running, just purchased, don't really know much about it, to hopefully a reliable bike that I can ride on the trails um, for many years to come. So hopefully you guys will follow along and stay tuned for the next video where I kind of break down and go into the actual engine of it. I'm going to tear the carburetor off. I'm going to clean it. I'm going to do a bunch of different things so you guys can see how I personally do it and how you guys could do it if you want to do it the same. Thank you. All right, that's about it for this video, guys. If you want to see more videos like this and just keep up to date with us on social media, everything's under One Lung Racing, and I will link it in the description. So make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. We're going to tear this bad girl down and see if we can get her to run.